Yo, what is going on guys? We are back today for another video and I have so much to talk about today. So we did something really weird, different, and interesting when it comes to the tier list. You know, the most popular series on my channel. As you'll see here, this is my YouTube, my past live streams. Uh, I streamed for about almost seven hours on Sunday and we were working on the tier list together. And it was so much fun to do it live. Unfortunately, my stream kept crashing. That's why there's four different streams there. Uh, there should only have been one, but I don't think I would have streamed as long if they didn't crash. So you know, whatever, it all happened for a reason. And I'm really, really happy with the state of the tier list. Now we did so much work to it on the stream yesterday. So I just wanna say thank you, first of all, to everyone who was there to help with all the changes, especially at the start, we spent about the first two hours, you know, just making colors, uh, like little, little changes and adding the emojis. We added, so, oh my God, it took so long to add all those emojis. But so we put in so much hard work into this list. So I just wanna say, say thank you to everyone who was there to help with that. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a bit of a different disclaimer today for the tier list. So the disclaimer today is that every single change that was made to this tier list followed a rule what was that rule essentially i don't have the final say <clears throat> the polls do so in chat on live we were doing live polls to vote uh and that was the way we decided if a champion would move if if, if it wasn't through a poll there was no movement i didn't make executive decisions on my own we truly collaborated together this was a true community team effort uh so that's the disclaimer i don't 100 percent agree with every change <clears throat> and so that's going to make this even more interesting to talk about so let's go ahead and uh and get started so we have so much to talk about today let's get started with the two newest champions okay so that would be the destroyer first let's talk about him first so the destroyer is landing in the titan tier now like i said every single champion that we're going to be talking about today they were voted on so they won the majority vote in a poll to be in the tier that they are in and so destroyer i i, I don't know I, I think titan tier or the old god tier somewhere in here um i don't know if he's quite proven himself yet he does have a lot going on. I feel like he he can deserve this tier. Uh, the, the only issue is that like I just haven't seen enough proof yet, you know. Uh, but you know, Destroyer is a is a great champ. You know, he has a lot going on. He is essentially a magical robot without being a robot, without having the robot tag. But he is basically just a magical robot. That's how you can think about him. He has a laundry list of immunities. You know, the regular robot immunities, including bleed and poison, which are fantastic. And then some other cool ones like slow immunity, uh, armor break immunity. Uh, I think he is he need to infuriate as well or something. And then, yeah, it's just some really, really, really great base immunities, dude. Uh, solid stuff there. And like a robot, he's not a robot, but he is kind of because he also disables the willpower and the salve mastery, which is what robots do, you know? So he's essentially a magical robot. Um, he does want to be awakened, which is why, you know, he has the little ar mechanical arm emoji. He does get some defensive prowess as well from that awakened ability. Um, and that does make him a decent defender. Now, he's not an incredible defender, and he's not an incredible attacker. I would say, you know, he's good at both, but not really excelling. Where this champion excels, it's, it's, it's ironic because the Battlegrounds meta that was just perfect for this guy, he came out during the final day of it <laughs> and which meta is that it was called zero to hero which is essentially the opponent gets uh, unblockable and indestructible buffs and destroyer destroys indestructible buffs so he's that was like the most perfect meta for him but the day he came out was the final day of the meta so really really sucks for destroyer man that is unfortunate uh whereas you know with bullseye when he came out he had like the full battleground season and a perfect meta for him to just dominate but destroyer kind of got the short end of the stick with that um but he is really cool you know he has a very unique power gain that also if you're awakened he can pause when he goes for three bars you know so that's something that's you know 
kind of anxiety inducing when you're playing uh, a champion with a lot of power gain you know your power shoots up to three bars and and you initially think like oh i gotta use this special instantly you know asap because i'm wasting my power gain you know like power doesn't go past three bars so if i hit there and i still have a lot of power that i'm gaining you know it just feels so wasteful or at least that's how it feels for me and so destroyer when he's awakened once he hits three bars he actually pauses his power gain which is really awesome i really love that i've always wanted a champion that can do that um and then you know, drop his special three you apply a big degen and then when you use your special two well the opponent is degen you just deal fat bursts of damage plus you know he has all his power gain he also gets energized so, you know a lot of power a lot of special throwing he's fun you know he's cool he's fun but he's not at the top of the meta he's simply not um haven't seen him a ton in super high tier battlegrounds uh it's just a little early you know kind of got to see where he ends up but chat the polls reflected a titan tier destroyer and, and i can see i think it's definitely one of these two tiers that for him uh it's just a matter of which and you know we'll, we'll see as time goes on we can always come back next month and revisit so that is where destroyer is landing now my biggest issue with destroyer being in titan tier though is chat also voted for serpent to be in titan tier now for me that just doesn't really make sense because serpent and destroyer have had such a vastly different impact on the game especially the high tiers of battlegrounds and alliance war you know destroyer I've seen him a little bit he's like okay on defense you know he's not like the worst defender he's an option you know but he's so so far from the best whereas serpent on the other hand dude this guy is one of the top five best defenders in all of mcoc right now no doubt no cap straight up it's just a fact like if i if i could pull up the stats in in, in mcoc pull data and pull stats of like battlegrounds see serpent's win rate so far dude it would be through the roof and also serpent got a meta that was really good for him because he came out before a uh, destroyer and so he got to fully utilize that zero to hero meta on defense which is insane for Serpent because the way that he works, also, he is a Kabam DLL champion, which we'll circle back to later. Uh, but just know his champions are pretty much all in a higher tier than this. Um, but the way Serpent works on defense is his special one and his special two, plus he gains power gain. He has a lot of power gain. So with his special one and two, the first hit you can get away from, you can outrange, get away from. But after that, his entire special is unblockable and there's going to be projectiles, and you can't evade. There's no evading allowed. It's like Heimdall. You know, Heimdall Special 2, that's the precedence on this type of mechanic, and DLL ran with that on Serpent on all of his specials, and man, it is a lethal combination, especially in that zero to hero meta, because this is a champion that you cannot dex their specials. So what are you going to do when Serpent is unblockable and indestructible and he throws his special what are you gonna do you're gonna get hit by it unless you're one champion and that's kushala because she can block unblockable she's like the only champion that could fully deal with serpent in that meta like it was just unreal it's just unreal and even outside of that meta he is still such a good defender he definitely has counters um you know some of his best counters are kushala, kushala uh, america chavez werewolf by night those are like three that come to mind pretty quick oh yeah dr doom is also a fairly good counter to serpent so you know he definitely has counters but man um he's a very powerful defender man so much block damage um you know i took the six star right to rank five and ascended him and he put in so much work for me on battlegrounds on defense one of my most winning defenders you know if i see him i drafted him i drafted him i put him on defense like every single time and he rarely ever let me down dude he is such a powerful defender that's why he has triple shields here the more shields just means the stronger of a defender and three is like the, the most so there's going to be a, a few champions on the list with three shields and maestro is also one of them because that means they're like a top five defender essentially and serpent is definitely one uh he does want to be higher sig because serpent is also kind of like hercules and the fact that he has an immortality 
So, you know, you go to kill Serpents, Psych, he doesn't die, and the higher the Sig, you know, the longer uh, this Immortality lasts. There's no way to, like, pause it like you can with Herc. It's, I think at max it's like, 8 seconds or something like that. But, you know, still an extremely powerful ability. And Serpent, you know, he has so much power gain that that little Immortality at the end is all he needs to, you know, throw off another special or maybe get to a special 3 or just pull some shenanigans, do more damage to you, kill you, just... Uh, it's so easy for things to go wrong, man. So easy. And then he also has the little relic icon um, because he does gain fury. So if you give him the Thor relic, the aptitudes, that stuff's going to work out pretty good for him. I, I recommend the Thor relic, his uh, his nephew. Serpent is Thor's uncle. And yeah, he's made a massive splash in the game, especially in the upper echelon of Battlegrounds and Alliance War. Uh, there are some Alliance Wars that I've seen where people just said, screw diversity and place like four or five serpents just to try to get kills. I think 4Loki did that at one point. Like, people were just spamming Serpents because he's that good of a defender. So, you know, like, Serpent and Destroyer have had such a vastly different impact on the game, and yet they're both landing in the same tier. You know, that, that just doesn't really seem right to me. But again, everything was decided by polls. So that's just where the polls land. But uh, the one thing that I decided to still be in full control of on this tier list was the top five current meta relevant champions. So this is my 100% opinion uh, from playing Battlegrounds, uh, you know, and Alliance War. These are the champions that are in the meta right now in every class. And Serpent is 100 million percent in the cosmic meta currently as a big bad defender. So at least you know I can put Serpent up there to show you guys just how how big of an impact and how good he is in the game right now. But uh, he is landing in the Titan tier. Personally, I probably would have put him in the GOAT tier. Um, but hey, Titan's a fine place to start. And you know, he can always go up later on. So it's all good. So that's our brand new two champions, Serpents and the Destroyer, landing on the list, both in the Titan tier. Oh, yeah, and just to put it into perspective, uh, DLL's other champions, I'm pretty sure all of them are in the GOAT tier. Let, let's see. So Photon, GOAT tier. Kushala, Absorbing Man, Goat Tier. Kate Bishop, Goat Tier. <laughs> like, they're all so highly ranked. So, you know, I, I think it's only a matter of time before Serpent gets into this tier. And it's not to say that he's a bad attacker and only a defender. The, pro the, the thing is just that he's more built for long-form content fights. You know, but he definitely can do some shorter fights. Like, he's a pretty good future Ant-Man counter in Battlegrounds. Um... But yeah, he's definitely more built for long-form content if you're going to be using him on attack. Um, but yeah, he definitely still has some uses in, in some sort of fights. Uh, definitely has some utility there. So those are our two brand new champions from uh, March. January, February, March. Yeah. Um, and we'll be talking about Prowler and Spider-Punk next month on uh, the May tier list. So now that we got Destroyer and Serpent talked about, let's go ahead and move on. We, we are going to be talking about Gladiator. But before we do that... Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Deathless Champions. Because before I had Deathless Guillotine, just kind of in the same uh, thing here with OG Guillotine. But I think they're they're different. <clears throat> and I think Deathless Guillotine is better. Personally, I like her more. Uh, I took her to rank 2 as a 7 star. I think she is just so much fun. I think she has really great damage. Um, and yeah, I don't even know. I I, I think Deathless Guillotine could even go a little bit higher on the list. Personally, I, I'm just a little biased. I do really like her. Um, the D-Gen is so nice. Uh, this little relic icon, if you give her the Ghost Rider relic, you see a massive spike in her damage. And like I already said, she already has some pretty good damage. You do have to be a little bit lucky, you know, because she, she, she gets D-Gen when she crits. The good thing, though, is, you know, she was available as a earnable 7-star and a earnable seven star that you can awaken and for those reasons as well that makes me want to place the champion higher because you know how many champions in this game are guaranteed earnable as a seven star and awakenable all completely for free just doing content you know it's the deathless champions that's about it there's also you know the the base pool selector in necropolis but that's just like one you know you don't, you don't get to get to pick a champ and awaken them like it's 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 so rare that you can work for a champ and work for the awakening as a seven star and i just love it i absolutely love it and for those reasons you know that makes me want to put the champ a little bit higher as well but again all this was decided via polls and the polls landed deathless guillotine in old god tier which is still a promotion you know from the mid tier which she was before so at least she's going up 
Uh, but yeah, she definitely does want to be awakened because then you get access to regeneration. Who doesn't want regeneration? Just a chance to get regen when you're attacking the opponent. Um, so for me, when I'm using guillotine, like I notice like that regen just triggers throughout and it just tops off my health. You know, it just heals all that little block chip damage and I'm finishing fights with full health because she's just been regening those little chunks throughout and just been doing so much damage with those degens and especially paired with that ghost rider relic. So yeah, I think Deathless Guillotine is great. I think the only real problem with her is that her special one does nothing. If her special one had like a guaranteed chance to apply one to two degens, that'd be perfect. And I think like, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's all she would need. And then I think she could go up a tier. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why Kabam's so adamant about her special one doing n simply nothing. I, I, I don't understand, <laughs> but <clears throat> Let's go ahead and move on now and talk about the other Deathless Champion, the newest one, and that is Deathless King Groot. So, Deathless King Groot via the poles is landing in the Titan tier along with Serpent. So, Deathless King Groot, man, you know, if we look at where regular King Groot is, he is in one tier below in the Old God tier. Uh, I firmly believe that Deathless King Groot is better than the Old King Groot. Because, you know, someone said after we did promotion, they're like, if you're going to promote Deathless King Groot, then you should promote the other King Groot too. And I was like, what? No. Like, they're, they're, they're two different champions. Deathless King Groot is, again, earnable for free as a 7-star. And, you know, if he follows the same pattern as Deathless Guillotine, hopefully we should have a guaranteed way to awaken him as well. Perhaps in, you know, the Spring of Suffering or whatever that's going to be. But, again, like, you can't just... Can't, first of all, King Groot doesn't exist as a 7-star. Second of all, there's no, like, earnable way to guarantee get him as a 7-star, let alone awaken him, you know? So just for that reason alone, that's huge. Just being a 7-star, seven 7-star seven stats is a big step up from being a 6-star, six 6-star six stats. Plus, you get access to stat focus, which is super duper nice. And Deathless King Groot, like, like I said, he's a different champ. He's, he's different than regular King Groot. He changes the damage source, you know, from poison to incinerate. So that's pretty neat. Um... And I, I like his damage more. I definitely like his damage more than regular King Groot. I was just never a fan of regular King Groot. When King Groot was initially released, he sucked. He was just a noodle that did no damage. Then he got buffed. Then a lot of people started to go on Team King Groot, like Brian Grant. You know, Brian Grant loves King Groot. Some others. Me personally, never cared for him. You know, sometimes i just have a, t a tough time when a champ was garbage then they get buffed and the buff is like all right but it's not like incredible i just think like why waste my time with that champion you know unless they're a champ i really like or they have something that really tickles my fancy you know i usually just continue to avoid that champion and that's what happened with king groot I've never in my life been a fan of king groot never never but deathless king groot man oh i really like this guy and also just one other thing this is a completely my personal bias but the Deathless Champions get extra points for me for their drip alone. Just being Deathless, having that black champion border, it's just so cool, man. It's just so... It's... Ah, I love it. I just love it. But like I said, all of these were decided by polls, and the polls landed Deathless King Groot in the Titan tier. It's between Old God and Titan, but Deathless King Groot landed here. So... That is where our Deathless Champions are landing. That is where our new 2024 Champions are landing on the list. Now, let's talk about Gladiator. So, a little bit of backstory before we talk about Gladiator. So, he was a Summoner's Choice Champion before he came out. You know, the only other predecessors of Summoner's Choice were Hercules. You know, arguably the, the best champion in the game. Not even arguable. Is He is the best champion in the game. And... Uh, it's Quicksilver, you know, not the best champ, but a great science champ, a bit more of a, just a niche science champ, but still extremely powerful in his own right, no doubt about it. A lot of damage, utility, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, the bar was set very high before Gladiator even entered the contest. And so when his voting was around, you know, I, I rallied my channel. I'm like, guys, I, I really think Gladiator would be a great addition to the game. He sounds so cool in the comics. Like, he's going to have so many immunities. Immunity to cold, heat, poison. Like, he's going to have it all. He's going to be insane once he has max confidence. He's, he's going to be, like, permanently indestructible. Like, I thought this guy was going to be the most busted champ in the game. Because in the comics, he is. And he's Summoner's Choice, you know? So I thought, I thought Kabam was truly going to deliver. 
so, you know, rallied the voters, and Gladiator managed to pull out the dub by, like, 0.5%. Like, he just, it was, like, 50.5% to 49.5% for against White Tiger. Like, he just squeaked out the win, but it was awesome. You know, the, the champ we were voting for won. Karate Mike was super on the Gladiator team, too. We were so happy. You know, then that year, Adam Warlock comes out as a six star and we knew gladiator would be a guarantee coming out as a seven star and adam you know adam also kind of set the cosmic bar pretty high it'd been a while since we had any cool new cosmics and i remember just me and four loki were like man if adam warlock is this good as a six star wait till we get our hands on a seven star gladiator you know like that was the sentiment gladiator finally came out and it was pretty much the most disappointing champion release I've like witnessed in this community in quite a while. Just so many people just dumping all over this guy, man. Just taking a big steamy dump all over him, calling him mid, 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 mediator, mid. This man was called mid more than any other champion in the game. <laughs> I and I think that's a fact. Um yeah, it, it was pretty rough for Gladiator. You know, then I ended up uh, qualifying for the battle round brawl, getting top eight, and unfortunately I didn't make it past the first round, which you kind of had to to be able to select any seven star. But then Kabam was like, "Nah, just for making top eight, you can pick any seven star in the game." I was like, "Oh, okay, bet." Who did I pick? Gladiator. Why? I knew he was wasn't the greatest, but I was banking on the rebalancing. You know, we had never had a Summoner's Choice champion be rebalanced in the history of MCOC, so. I was banking on a good one. I was banking on an incredible rebalancing. And the rebalancing isn't as good as I would had hoped because my expectations were way up here, man. Like there's there's no way. There's there's no way. You know, like I wanted to see immunities added and stuff, and that's that's not really in the spirit of rebalancing. Um rebalancing is about, you know, making changes to their current kit, not just adding a whole bunch of new stuff. So I knew it was extremely unlikely, but hey, a man can hope, alright. No one can take my hope away from me. If I want to hope for something, I very well can. But, you know, Gladiator still turned out great. He still turned out so much better than he was. You know, they made some really good changes. It's very easy to feel those changes. His ramp is so much faster now. Uh, that alone is just a massive deal. He, he does more damage now with his confidence. It's like cut the ramp in half. Plus, it's like more potent ramp now. So it feels better. The damage feels better. Um... And not only, so like when Gladiator first came out with rebalancing, you know, it's when, when you have a champion that has been called mid more than any other champion in the game, you know, regardless of what the rebalancing looks like, it's going to take some amount of time for the community to come around. You know, it's going to take some time. It, it doesn't matter how good the buff is. It's still going to take X amount of time. And especially because Gladiator has been called mid for so long and the... The rebalancing is substantial, but like you have to kind of already know how Gladiator works to truly understand how substantial it is and to feel it. Whereas if you never played Gladiator and you've only seen gameplay and you looked at the changes, you you might think like that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, you know. But with once you actually play Gladiator, it, it feels like a massive deal. Like having played Gladiator pre and post rebalancing, the ramp is day and night difference. Like it's 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 completely different. Uh, but someone who didn't play Gladiator before and after, you know, they wouldn't really know that. So, of course, it's going to take some time for Gladiator to really come around. And so, you know, when his rebalancing first, first, first came out, I didn't hear a ton of great things. I heard some great things. But, you know, there's always some people in Gladiator's corner. But then, you know, something really happened. And that was the Winter of Woe gauntlet. And right away, Nagase made a video with Gladiator in there taking multiple fights. And I think that was probably the, the biggest dub Gladiator has ever gotten. Because right after that video was posted, man, like, the the sentiment around Gladiator just begun to change. Like, the new biggest content in the game and Rebalance Gladiator is taking multiple difficult fights in there and doing them extremely well. You know, so that... that I, I think that that's truly saved Gladiator. Nagase has, has very much so helped Gladiator's mid-tier, uh, mid-tier title, you know? So we ran the poll, and um, he got promoted from the mid-tier to the old god tier. Now, I think there is definitely room for Gladiator to go higher, 
I, I think Titan tier, I think might be the perfect spot for him. I, I don't think he he's he's a goat. Maybe, maybe there's some people that think that there was definitely some votes for that tier. And there's a decent amount of votes for Titan tier. But ultimately, Old God tier is where he landed. I can very easily see him being promoted next month to Titan. But hey, man, one promotion at a time. At least he went up. He got promoted. His rebalancing did a good job. So, you know, Gladiator is in a so much better place now than he was when he first came out. So that's a dub. At the end of the day, that is a that is a dub. So that is Gladiator landing in the old gods here with definitely some room to go higher. We just have to, you know, give it more time, really see how he starts to age in the contest. His rebalance, you know, really only came out a couple weeks, a week or two ago. So, you know, we're still, still seeing the full power of what a rebalanced Gladiator can do. Okay, so those were all the main champs that I really wanted to, to cover and talk about first, but now we have so many other promotions in the motion, so we have a lot, so I'm gonna try to go through them a little bit quicker, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's go top to bottom. Let me just take a quick drink. Okay, let's do it. So, Luke Cage was promoted from the mid-tier to the old god tier, and Red Guardian was promoted from the mid-tier to the titan tier. Now, these are two newly buffed science champions, and I have not played either of them. But, and again, this was decided completely by polls. So, we did Red Guardian first, and he went to the Titan tier, and I was shocked. I was like, what? Like, there was a lot of votes for Titan. Like, it wasn't close. And again, I haven't played Re Red Guardian or Luke Cage after the buff, so I don't really know how good they are. So, chat really surprised me on that one. I was like, oh, okay, you know, if Red Guardian's Titan tier, all right, what about Luke? And Luke gets voted for Old God tier. And I'm like, hold on. So you're telling me Red Guardian's buff is way better than Luke Cage's buff, at least by, you know, the polls. That's what the polls are saying. And yet, Kabam decides to put Luke Cage in the Titan pool instead of Red Guardian. Like, really? Really, Kabam? They picked the worst one to put in Titan? Okay. Ah. But that's kind of bugged me a little bit, but, you know, whatever. Um, and then Immortal Abomination also got promoted from the Old God tier to the Titan tier. This one was a very close poll. Um, it started out with him just being, staying in gold, old god tier, then it was really close, and then he just, like, barely pulled ahead and made it into the titan tier. So, personally, I don't really think Ibom belongs here. Don't get me wrong, I like Ibom, I think he's a great champ. There's just one thing holding him back, and it's not even his fault. I don't, I don't even blame Ibom for this, uh, but it's a mastery, and that mastery is inequity. The way the inequity mastery works is for every debuff on your opponent, they lower their attack. Now, in high tier battlegrounds, you have to assume that every single player is running that mastery. That's just what you should be assuming if you're doing high tier battlegrounds. Just always assume your opponent has the best possible mastery setup, and most times they do, anyways. So, when your opponent has inequity, that nerfs I Bomb on attack because he applies poison debuffs to himself, which is all part of his kit. But if the opponent's running inequity, that's lowering his attack. So, it makes him a much slower battlegrounds attacker. Which really sucks, you know, if his poisons were, like, passive, but he could still, like, heal from them via willpower or something, that'd be incredible. If I bomb could get a little tweak like that to his kit and be released as a 7-star, I can honestly see him going higher. But he just has some big hang-ups right now. It's mainly those poison debuffs and the interaction with the Inequity Mastery, which is so unfortunate because, like, that's not I bombs fault at all. It's not his fault. But, yeah, I truly do not believe he belongs in Titan tier because of that. But once again... This was decided by the polls, so I bomb is in the Titans here. Then we have Morbius, um, who we did a repoll. So we pulled him like at the start of the stream, <clears throat> and he just barely stayed in the Titan tier. Then again, towards the end of the tier, we pulled again, and it was way more significant. It was like I only had two options at that point. I got four options on the first vote, but yeah, when I only had Old God tier or Titan tier for Morbius, it was like. 60 70 percent to him go down to old god tier and, and i agree with it um i have a seven star rank to morbius and i said on stream like i don't think i've used him a single time this entire year like in all of 2024 you know we're four months in i don't think i've used my seven star morbius a single time like, he's not bad he, he's good but there's just the science class is the best class in the game so it's it's very competitive which is why i also if I'm doing the promotions, I'm like even more of a stickler because this class is so sacred. It's the best class in the game, in my opinion, that I'm even more strict about promotions and stuff. So 
yeah, I think Morbius, this is the tier where he belongs. And then we had Human Torch get promoted. So someone asked for Torch Pole, we did it. And he significantly made it to the GOAT tier. Now, this is another one that I absolutely do not agree with. Human Torch has... Okay, now... now let, let, me, let, me, let me say something first. Now, when Human Torch first came out, he was regarded... People weren't saying the word mid back then, but that's what the sentiment was. That Human Torch was not a good champion. Um, and the, the bulk of the community ignored Human Torch for a very long time and didn't like him. Me, on the other hand, right when Human Torch came out, I liked him, and I was making multiple, multiple videos. I was I was drunk camping, and I spent like all my units on Human Torch Crystals, uh, I think to try for a 6-star, and I pulled the 5-star, but I still ranked the 5-star, and I made it so many, I made like 10 videos in a row on Human Torch, and people were sick of it. They're like, dude, stop trying to say Torch is God tier, you know, stop making videos on Torch, I'm gonna unsubscribe, you're just trying to justify spending all your units on Torch. Like, literally, those were the comments I was getting, you know? I was I was on Team Torch from day one. I was in his corner from the beginning. Then, um, Abyss of Legends came out, and that's when the spotlight shined on Human Torch because people finally saw how good he is in long-form content. You know, when you can really build up his smolders, you increase his damage just exponentially against these Mystic Champs. And after Abyss, you know, Human Torch was finally starting to be regarded as, you know, one of the best Science Champs in the game. But, you know, that was a very, very long time ago. The times have changed so significantly in MCOC since the Abyss days, okay? I am not a Human Torch hater. I love Human Torch. He still remains in my top 10 favorite champs in the game. But that doesn't mean that I am blind or biased. Human Torch has significantly fallen off. And the main reason for that is because of 7 stars. And again, that's not Human Torch's fault. He is restricted as a six star champion of course six star champions are going to struggle when they are punching up against seven stars with much bigger stats it is very difficult to be using six star torch in the highest tier of battlegrounds when you're fighting rank three seven star big mystic defenders and that's torch's bread and butter mystic defenders but even in those perfect ideal matchups it's not enough anymore in battlegrounds and for those reasons, that's why I don't think Human Torch belongs in this GOAT tier. All of these other science champions do so much more than Torch. They have so much more substance and validity in their kit. There's so much more that they can do. There are defensive options. You know, there's so much going on. The science class is jam-packed full of so much different kind of unique utility. So much kind of stuff with Scorpion, Titania, Hulk, Spider-Man, Photon, you know, four of those being available as seven stars. Like, I just don't think Torch belongs here um but he's still a great champion don't get me wrong i just think the titan tier is like the perfect spot for torch and you know this had some people really mad because they're like why is torch in that tier but silk is not uh you know we did a poll for silk she didn't get promoted um we did a poll for spot because personally i think spot right now is a better champion than torch because you know, he's available as a seven star he has seven star stats he is a pretty decent defender too for the most part whereas torch you know is not uh, Spot didn't get promoted to the GOAT tier. So, yeah, you know, that's just what happens with, with polls. Sometimes so something I'm not going to agree with gets promoted. or, or some, And there's a good amount of other people that also didn't agree with this promotion. But the, the majority rules, that's the way the polls go. And I wanted to keep that entire stream following those rules of the polls. So that's what I decided to do. Stay true to my word. And this tier list reflects the polls in its entirety. So, that is science. All the changes here, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, let's go ahead and move on to Cosmic. So, th there there was, oh my god, one demotion, that, the worst demotion I, I'd ever seen. So, we did a poll on Null. Um, and people literally voted Null out of the GOAT tier into the Titan tier. And I was just in disbelief. And I didn't want to do it, but, but again... I was a man of my word, stuck to the results of the polls, and I demoted Null. And he was demoted for for like hours. And then towards the end of the stream, we did a couple of repolls. So we revisited Null, um, and we just had two options, Titan or Goats. I think I had like multiple tier options on the first vote. And we did another vote, 
and he Zarafa was there for the second vote. Zarafa wasn't around for the first one. If you guys don't know Zarafa, he had like one of the first ranked three nulls in the game. He picked Null as his uh his champion from the battle round brawl. He also qualified, you know, alongside me and Andy, and Null was the champ he picked. Biggest null lover out there. And after Null was demoted, I was like, dude, I'm gonna have to call Zarafa. And then when we did the repoll for Nulls, Rafa just happened to be there and and then he got promoted to go tier. So Zarafa's so presence alone helped Null get back here where he belongs, man. Null is a top five Cosmo champion, in my opinion, and nothing anyone can say will change my opinion on that. Um, I think these five Cosmo champions are just up and above the rest, simply put. Um, in my opinion, you know, I've been playing this game for a very long time. I've played all of these Cosmic Champions a lot. I have a lot of experience with all of them. I know all of their kits extremely well. And I can just, I can highly recommend these Cosmic Champs to anyone all the time. They're, they're just so good. So freaking good. Love them. I have Hercules, rank 5. Hulkling, rank 5. Ascended. Gallon, rank 5. Ascended. Null, rank 5. Or, sorry, CGR, rank 5. And Null, rank 3. <laughs> so, you know, love all these Cosmic Champs. Highly recommend them. Uh, we did some polls for Maestro, uh, or I think we did, and Adam, and Hyperion, and Venom, and none of them got the promotion to the GOAT tier. We, we tried with promotions, but no, they are remaining Titan tier. But Gamora, on the other hand, she got promoted from the old God tier to the Titan tier, which is interesting. Uh, you know, Gamora definitely wants her own relic, I would assume. I have i don't think I've played Gamora too much after her, her buff. I think I played her after like her second buff, I think she's on her like third buff now i don't know i'm not a fan of gamora at all personally but again this is reflecting the polls and gamora is a titan tier champ from the polls um and so i think that's it for cosmic not too many other changes here there's so many changes once we get to skill all right let's do mystic next okay so oh this was a big one black widow clairvoyant was demoted via the polls from the titan tier to the old god tier interesting i i was a little surprised by that but personally i 100 percent agree with it i don't i don't think clairvoyant should belongs here i think she's fallen off very hard if she did come out as a seven star i think there'd be an entirely different story but she did not so she got demoted again once again via the polls wiccan on the other hand though did get promoted from the old god tier once again via polls um and then we had some some pretty big shakeups. so Hood was voted. We did have Hood vote. Uh, he didn't quite make it to the GOAT status though, so he's remaining in Titan. Uh, we did a vote for Rintra. Rintra was in the GOAT tier, uh, and he was voted to be demoted down to Titan. And then the only other change here was Werewolf by Night, one of my favorite champs in the game right now. I love this dog, the doggo. Oh! He was voted to be promoted from the Titan tier to the GOAT tier, which is one of my favorite promotions. I was, I, I was, this one really surprised me. I didn't think chat was gonna, gonna vote for that. Um, cause I feel like a lot of people don't know the full power of the dog, but maybe they do now because he got that promotion. So the dog chilling in, in the GOAT tier, which I love to see, man. Uh, and he does have this little skill icon because of MSD. MSD is the reason for that because the way I play Werewolf by Night and the way MSD plays Werewolf by Night is very different. I just play him the bog standard way, you know, dash back, howl, get the power game going, and go in. MSD has all these other little ways to trigger, to trigger, to trigger the howl, with like a light intercept that he can do it, and some other ways. I'm gonna need him to teach me that uh, if I take Werewolf up to rank three. But yeah, there definitely is some skill expression available through Werewolf by Night right now with his howl. So that's why that emoji's there. He's a fantastic defender. His AI, he has one of the wonkiest AIs in the entire game, which just makes him, you know, a little bit of a, an unknown variable when you're fighting him on defense because, and there's the reason for his wonky AI is because he tries to howl. So, you know, he, he just, he stands there, he howls to get his power gain. And this one time I was fighting him, he literally started to howl. I was like, oh, he's howling. I go in, I get parried. He freaking baited me with his howl and then parried me, dude. Like he, he's definitely a good defender. He also has like, he's in within the top five biggest health pools in the entire game. So, you know, that's something as well. That may, definitely helps with his defensive prowess. Um, he would like to be awakened. I would love to awaken mine. Uh, you know, then he gets access to unblockable and unstoppable passives, dealing with the howls and his power bar thresholds. Uh, and then he also has the relic icon because if you give him the Ghost Rider relic, uh, you can actually increase the power gain from his howls. You can also get a um, 
forget the word, but you get it's like a little claw looking debuff or, or passive that will just increase your damage over time. I mean, I can go pull up the relic real quick. Um, Ghost Rider, it's already on my dog. I'll show you guys here. So this right here, power gain potency up. So that just increases the howl power gain, which is great. Uh, and then here, when you use a striker, um, where is it? You get a, a vicious, vicious, that's it. When inflicting a degeneration vulnerability, which you inflict uh, when you use the striker, you inflict a degeneration vulnerability debuff. Then you also uh, inflict a non-stacking 4.24% vicious passive for 14 seconds. And so this effect also increases the potency of passive damaging effects. So just damaging effects. That means his ruptures work for this. That means his passive rupture on his L3 works for this. So you're just increasing your rupture damage even more. And Werewolf by Night already has unreal rupture damage. It's really, really good. So yeah, I if I rank three my Werewolf by Night, which he's one of my top two options right now, then I also might rank three this Ghost Rider Relic, which would be sick. So, yeah, man, highly, highly, highly recommend Werewolf by Night. He's an incredible champion, and, uh, yeah, that's the Relic best form. So, yeah, that is, I think, everything in Mystic. Okay, let's go ahead and move on now to Mutant. There's definitely some shakeups here. So, we had two big demotions from the Titan tier, and that was Strife and Professor X. Both of these champions were voted out of this tier via the polls. Uh, and then Apocalypse, he was in the GOAT tier, and he was demoted down to the Titan tier. Which is... Man, that sucks, because Apocalypse, you know, at one point, was kind of the best mutant in the game, or arguably the best mutant in the game. And now, by, by the polls, he was voted out of the top tier. That's crazy, man. Apocalypse fell off hard. I, I think if he just came back as a 7-star, he'd be back. I think that's literally all Apoc needs. I think Apoc is an incredible champion... He doesn't need the dupe but all all it gives him is his like regen slumber in between fights which is so bs that's garbage so like an undupe seven star apocalypse man but just out the crystal oh that'd be so good man yeah apocalypse all he needs is to come back in a seven star in a titan pool and this man will be back but i think as long as he's a limited as a six star he's just not really gonna have much of a presence in the game uh, especially in like the high tiers and stuff but um yeah then we also had iceman get a promotion from the old god tier to the titan tier i think that makes total sense uh my iceman is now rank 5 sig 200 i gave him actually the x magica gem and i recorded it on my old phone unfortunately before i got my new one and my old phone uh the storage on it was just messed up so like it didn't record properly I only recorded like the last bit of the clip which is like i rank i took him rank five with the x magic gym and then i did alliance war with him he did so great i was looking forward to uploading it and like it recorded like 16 seconds of the of it and i was like bro so stupid so why i'm so glad i have my new phone I haven't had any recording issues on that yet but um yeah iceman is awesome after his buff he's definitely not goat tier worthy in my opinion but a, a titan tier worthy yeah i think this is a really great spot for iceman especially you know just because of the presence of bullseye that makes iceman better that makes iceman stocks go up because of bullseye bullseye just coming into the game has actually put stocks up in the mutant class because a lot of his counters belong in the mutant class so bullseye actually inadvertently has made the mutant class better which is an interesting thing to think about and then we had one uh, promotion into the GOAT tier, and that is Sunspot, dude. Like, before I had Sunspot here, then we promoted him here, and now he's in the highest tier, which is crazy. But honestly, I do think he deserves it. Um, and that is mainly Battlegrounds-wise. You know, this this was a poll. The poll people uh, voted for him to be in the GOAT tier. Uh, and, and I think he does deserve it, but it's it's mainly because of just how dominant of an attacker he is in Battlegrounds and in and, and Alliance War too. Uh, I saw MSD take like a bullseye boss with Sunspot, which is super impressive. So yeah, um, Sunspot, I I man, I love him. I'd love to pull a seven star Sunspot. Uh, I, I don't have him at all. You know, Brian has him Sig forty. I don't even have him at all. I'd love a Sunspot. Almost pulled him yesterday. If you guys saw the crystal uh cleanup video but we got troll rolled right over him onto someone else so yeah but sunspot in that go tier all right now i think we should have two more classes tech and skill all right let's go 
So in tech, we had a Kang promotion from the trash tier to the mid tier. Then we had... Well, that's really it for the bottom, bottom tiers. And then, wow, there's really no changes in tech. It was really just Nimrod. So Nimrod, you know, was in the GOAT tier. And I've been saying for a while, you know, I, I think Nimrod is due for a demotion. He's fallen off very hard. You know, when you think of Nimrod, what is his best matchup? Domino. Now, what are matchups Bishop cannot, or sorry, what are matchups Nimrod cannot do? Bishop, that's why I said Bishop. Bishop's one of them. Onslaught's one of them, brand new mutant defender. Who else is a brand new mutant defender? Dust. Oh yeah, Nimrod can't take Dust either. So, you know, three of, say two of the most common mutants, you know, Onslaught and Bishop, they're very common in decks. Nimrod does can't do anything against them. He can like kind of fight Bishop, but it's not good. Good luck against Onslaught. Onslaught will take no shock damage. Um, Dust, yeah, I think Dust is shock immune or something. So good luck with Nimrod there. Um, and so like that leaves Domino. You know, at least Nimrod can counter Domino, right? Well, like two seasons ago, I was using Nimrod, drafted him. My opponent drafted Domino. This happened two separate times. So I have Nimrod already drafted. I think I already had him drafted on one. My opponent still drafted Domino. I think on the other one, my opponent had Domino, and then I drafted Nimrod to counter it. And so in both of these instances, my opponents still placed Domino on defense. Even though they had other defensive options, they still decided to place Domino down, even though I had Nimrod. And guess what? They won. I lost twice with Nimrod versus Domino. And on one of them, it might have been because of the meta. I'm not sure why it was happening. But I was taking crit failure damage from Domino with Nimrod. That's not supposed to be happening. So I was t losing health too. And like my one special two wasn't killing. You know, I was fighting like rank two dominoes. This is like a rank five Nimrod, not ascended. And he's, he's just, he's, he's just, no. He's, I lost twice with him. And after that, I was like, dude, I'm so done with Nimrod. Like, I just think there's there's better tech champions these days. Um, and I think Red Skull is 100% one of them. We did some polls for, for Red Skull, for Warlock, for, for Shocker. And actually none of them were... Got, were promoted to go tier they were all voted to stay in the titan tier shocker was very close he almost made it but not quite uh i think i don't know if red skull is close or not but i i really really like red skull right now and if i pull red skull out of the titan he'll probably be be my next tech rank three because i i like red skull that much he's got two shields here because he's a very good defender plus an incredible attacker he's a domino counter they did a really great job with Red Skull's buff, man. He is so much better now. But uh, he he was not good enough yet to be voted into the... Guys, sorry for the rude interruption. My OBS froze once again. That's what was happening when I was working on the tier list on the streams. You know, it happened three times. I'm just so happy the last 45 minutes recorded. I thought I was going to have to do it all again. But okay, as I was saying... And I'm actually glad that that it happened because I forgot that Hulkbuster was the most. We're going to talk to him in a sec. But... I think I was cut off right before I was saying Red Skull just didn't quite make the GOAT tier, but I think uh, in the future, I think he will, but yeah. And then Hulkbuster. So this was another demotion that I did, didn't really agree with, but he was in the GOAT tier and he was demoted to Titan tier. Now, I feel like this is just a lot of people don't understand the power of Hulkbuster. Dude, Hulkbuster is one of the strongest tech champs in the entire game, easily. Like, Oh my god, he is so good. I'm, I, it honestly made me a little bit sad that he got demoted. Uh, he is my one of my most wanted 7 stars in the entire game right now. The problem is just that he's so rare. You know, He's only in those incursion crystals. So it's very difficult to get him. I think that's also why he got demoted. Because like it's so difficult to get him that a lot of people don't know the power. Because they don't have him. Which is, which is fair. That is fair. Um, but man, he's so good. He is so good. Like Watch some of Karate Mike. Like, if you really want to see the full extent of Hulkbuster's power. He has a rank 3. He plays him extremely well. It, it's just so nutty, dude. It's so nutty. And then, you know, you can also see Brian Grant, who also has a Hulkbuster and uses him. And Brian's not, like, a full mastery efficiency with Hulkbuster, like how Karate Mike is. You know, Brian even says Karate Mike is like his sensei, you know, with Hulkbuster. Um, but even Brian, you know, still plays Hulkbuster pretty well. And still gets so such insanely good results with him, man. Like, it's... It's unreal. All you do is throw your special two into their block. You 100% power drain them, power lock them for a bit. 
Like, the dude is unreal. His specials hit so hard. His special one especially hits like a freaking truck. You spam a couple special ones back to back, they crit, dude. You do so much damage. It's throwing some heavies to build some shocks to increase your damage even more. And you are just cooking, man. It is, ah. Oh. It hurt my soul a little bit to see Hulkbuster demoted, man. But once I pull a 7-star, I'll rank him up and I will show you guys so much gameplay that I think him being promoted will only be inevitable. But that, I think that's finally it for the tech class. We only have three champs in this GOAT tier status now. Shuri, Bam, and Ghost. Okay, let's move on to skill. There was so many changes here. This is where we have the most changes. We... Okay, so... <laughs> let's start... Let's start with Jabari. So I promoted Jabari on the last list to the Titan tier of my own volition. And the reason for that was because if you guys saw me do Fintech's challenge, you know, using Tiger and Jabari Panther and EOP acceptance, um, we had to do, you know, the whole thing with just those two champions. And holy crap, dude, Jabari did such a good job as a seven star rank one i was soloing EOP, eop fights with her bro i've never played jabari in my life and i'm soloing eop fights with her and one of the big reasons why i promoted her is because my good friend darth ghost had showed me gameplay you can look on his channel for it if you don't believe me he literally took a photon and a bullseye two incredibly good defenders in battlegrounds you know those are top 10 defenders easily those champs are so common in people's decks photon and bullseye Photon and Bullseye, very common, very good defenders. He has a video of his Jabari Panther taking both of them in under 45 seconds. Jabari Panther can take Bullseye and Photon in under 45 seconds, man. It is, I think Jabari Panther is, I think maybe the most underrated champion in the entire game. And it, it's criminal, it's criminal. And of course she was demoted. Um, I, I even said, like, I didn't want to do a Jabari poll because I knew she was going to be devoted, demoted. And someone was like, oh, well, if you don't do a poll, that's rigged. And I was like, okay, we'll do a poll. Like, I, I wasn't scared to do any polls. And any polls I were asked for, I did. And I respected the results. Um, and if I didn't like the result, you know, maybe we did a repoll later on. But again, I respected whatever the re results of the repoll was, too. Um, and so we did one poll for, poll for Jabari and she got demoted. At least, you know, she didn't get demoted to the mid tier. That would have been straight up disrespectful. Yeah, this is still, uh, you know, still a good tier to be in. Um, but yeah, I, I think Jabari belongs here, but she's, she's going to stay criminally underrated. You know, maybe that's not even a bad thing. Maybe it's, maybe it's a good thing that she's underrated because then the Jabari lovers are going to keep catching people off guard in Battlegrounds. <laughs> Uh, then we had some promotions of Korg and Killmonger from this old god tier to the Titan tier, which I think is totally warranted. These guys are incredible defenders. Again, top 10 defenders in Battlegrounds. They are in, very common in so many decks. They got the two shields for how good they are on defense. Um, and then, man, we have four demotions from the GOAT tier. So we had seven champions in this GOAT tier before... Now we only have three. So we had Chilf, we had Shang-Chi, we had Black Cat, we had Bullseye. So let's talk about all these. So Chilf. Now Chilf, I think, makes complete sense. Uh, I think I had her here, you know, more so when she first came out because she was a better defender when she first came out. People were still kind of learning. She was catching people. She, had, she was my one and only death for a whole season of Alliance War. And she was doing really good in Battlegrounds. Um, I had, I, you know, I have a seven star Undeep rank two. She was putting in work. I haven't used her in a while. Uh, in a long while. I don't really play with her that much anymore. She doesn't make the decks. Um, don't get me wrong. She's a good champ. I just don't think she belongs in the GOAT tier anymore. Uh, I think she's fallen off a little bit. But I think the Titan tier is a perfect spot for her. So, so that uh, demotion, completely agree with. Completely agree with. Let's talk about Shang-Chi next. Shang-Chi... This one surprised me, honestly, because, you know, there's a lot of Shang-Chi lovers out there. A lot of people that regard him as, like, you know, one of the best skill champs in the game. So I, I was very surprised to see him demoted. But, mm, I don't know, man. I, I, I would take Shang-Chi over Kingpin. I prefer Shang-Chi over Kingpin, personally. That's more of a personal preference. But I feel like they're not that far apart from each other, Shang-Chi and Kingpin. In my opinion, in my brain, I, I don't see them as that far apart. So I feel like... They belong in the same tier. Personally, we did do a vote for Kingpin, and he was voted to stay in this tier. Um, so, yeah. 
And then this one hurt. This one hurt my soul too. Black Cat. Demoted from the GOAT tier to the Titan tier, man. It's messed up. Black Cat, you know, the biggest baddie in MCOC. She's she's so good. She has the Relic icon three times here because the Black Widow Relic is extremely important for her. It completely changes her as a champion. Um, and, and yeah, and so we were also talking about with the skill emojis about who, when we we're doing that, who to give them to. And people were saying Black Cat. And I was trying to tell people that Black Cat doesn't require skill to play in Battlegrounds, you know, which is where you want to be using her. She requires no skill at all. You, you And people are like, no, but you need to like intercept, heavy intercepting, heavy counter, that kind of stuff. I'm like, no, no, you don't need to do that in Battlegrounds. Literally, I need to make a Black Cat video already. I have gameplay, I need to make it. But literally in battlegrounds the opponent starts with the calling card at the, on them at zero after they throw a special and you punish it the calling card goes on you and turns to one that that's that's all you need to do literally bait a special which you do every match and punish it S simply it boom cards on you build your power throw your special two apply the debuff to the opponent do a combo throw your striker do more combos opponent's dead that's it. No intercepting, no heavies, nothing fancy. That's it. It's just, you, you do not need skill to play Black Cat, dude. You do not. And, and I'm talking about her, her ideal matchups, too. We're talking Hulklings, Nick Furies, Sasquatch. That's all you have to do. No intercepting, no heavy intercepting, no heavy countering required. But, you know, you can do that kind of stuff and get crazy with her. So, you know, we I did still put that emoji. But just know there is not a skill requirement to playing black cat at least in battlegrounds there's not all you need is the relic apply that black widow relic it's gonna apply a beeper debuff so even if a champion doesn't have abilities that you can fail and take advantage of the beeper debuff with that relic will make it so that you can the beeper debuff will make it so you can fail that and deal damage on that and keep pausing your sabotage so skill is not even for black cat the relic though is and still she was demoted so that sucks. I think Black Cat deserves to be a go tier. She's a very, 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 very powerful Battlegrounds attacker. I was really happy to have her rank two. I don't know. I feel like Titan tier is still like fine for her, but I don't know. I, I just think she's pretty good. Um, Crossbones, Mantis, and Masakre. We did individual votes for all three of these champions, uh, and none of them got promoted. We also did a poll for Mole Man, and he almost got demoted, actually. I was like, guys. Please do not make me demote Mole Man. Like, he's fine here. And then the poll actually, like, some more percentage went to Titan, and he ended up staying. I was like, oh my god. Like, I, I think Mole Man's chilling here. Um, but, yeah, I, I, Crossbones, Mantis, and Sakura were all voted to remain in the Titan tier. Um, same for, for Aegon as well. He was voted to stay in the Titan tier. Um, and then the last champ we have that was demoted was Bullseye. So, I put Bullseye in the GOAT tier. You know when he came out and the reason for that you know is I, that's the same reason why i think serpent belongs here because bullseye and serpent both have shaken up the top meta of the game and just the, just the whole game in general as you know being these insane defenders that like pretty much require a counter or you're screwed and they're both triple shield threat level defenders like both best of the best um like Bullseye is just such a good defender. He's definitely a bit weaker on attack, but he definitely has a ton of utility. And I think if you play him skillfully, you know, you can definitely increase his attack with the perk releases and the evading and the specials for Fury and that kind of stuff. And it's not terrible. Um, I really do think Bullseye deserves this tier. But again, we're going by the polls, and the polls say to demote to Titan. So that's where Bullseye is. And yeah, a little unfortunate. Because Bullseye is my other rank 3 option. You know, we are talking about uh, the Doggo earlier. Bullseye is the other option. Bullseye and Doggo, those are the two 7 stars right now on the at the top of my radar for 7 star rank 3. Unfortunately, they're both unduped. So if I could dupe either one of them, oof, that'd be sick. And if I could pull a three, 2 to 3 skill or Mystic Gem from Act 8, it would be so perfect because then both of them can go up to rank 3. Because I'm about to have a, a rank 3 via Catalyst and then that rank 3 gem. So I'm just hoping and praying, man, for a Bullseye or a Doggo and a skill and a Mystic Gem. But I'm pretty sure that is it, guys. That is all of the changes to this tier list. It looks so much cleaner, so much better now. Uh, we, you know, we renamed the tiers 
um, Titan tier. I really like the sound of that, you know, just because we have the Titan Crystal as well. Then we have the Old God tier. What this essentially means is, you know, in 2018, we had God tier champions, you know, like Blade. Blade was the best champion in the game, you know, at that time. He was God tier. But the game has advanced so much now that, you know, those old standards of God tier, this is how they stack up in today's game. You know, it's about the middle of the pack. There, There's just uh, such high caliber of champions above the old God tiers. And then even above that was, you know, the greatest. So I really like the name of this tier. I really like the names of all the tiers now. Then we have the mid tier. You know, people in our community love to use that word mid. So now we have a whole tier for it. And then a trash tier is just trash, you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really loving the tier list in its current shape and form. Uh, streaming it, I think, was one of the best ideas I've ever had. That was so much fun. I had such a good time hanging out with you guys on stream, doing these polls. It was just so much fun. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to do that every month, but let me know if you guys want to see that every month. If every month, you know, we do a stream, we do polls, we change up the tier list, and then I make a video showing it off. Or would you want to see that maybe every two months? every three months um yeah just let me know let me let me know what you guys think about all this i think it was a lot of fun and a really cool way to really truly interact with you guys because i've said you know for the last year that this isn't my tier list it's our tier list but you know i've kind of always been making the executive decisions at the end of the day but with the polls no we just the polls decide which is a very unique and different way to do it which can lead to you know some demotions being a bit sour and some promotions feeling a little bit better but Overall, I, I think it was a really, really positive experience, and I just had such a good time, and I know a lot of you guys who participated also really enjoyed. I'm sure a lot of you guys weren't there and missed out, um, but yeah, if you want to see more, just let me know in the comments. Let me know all your guys' feedback. I still will definitely read all the comments, uh, you know, and take that as feedback, but um, I, I think polls might be the new way. So let me know what you guys think about all this, all these changes, the tier list. The, the colors, the tier names, the promotions, the demotions, the new additions, the Deathless Champions, Gladiator. Want all your thoughts and feedback in the comment section down below. Please leave a comment. If you watch this video for more than five minutes, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. Say bye to Ace. Peace out.